Praise the Lord. Welcome and greetings. Thank you for taking time to tune in. We have a lot to offer, wonderful information, three months worth of sessions. It's all free and available for you. Devotionals, virtual conferences, and more. Be sure to like and share, invite your friends, and share the gospel. Spread the light, the love, and the life of Jesus Christ with others. You'll be blessed as you listen, and you will grow in your walk with the Lord. Join us online. God bless. Have a hold of some miracles. Let's say together, God is a miracle working God. Come on, God is a miracle working God. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise and thank Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, uh, if you have need of miracles, you're in the right place. Jesus said, if you gather in my name, how many? Two or three, the smallest amount of number possible. If you gather in my name, what will He do? Walk in the midst of you. So just go ahead and tell us about it. He's walking around right now. I got a chance to. I arrived just a few minutes late. I had a lot of things to take care of on the phone with the extended body of Christ. So I was running a little late. I gave Linda a quick call and said, hey, let Pastor Gary and Bobby and Isaac know I'm coming. Start on time. But uh, praise the Lord. He walks among us. Say it together. He walks among us. And so as I came in, I got to walk around and keep my distance. And what do you call it? This is not a high five. This is a fist pump. Fist pump. I don't know. That just uh, I, I like knuckle sandwich better. But anyway, that can mean different things, can't it? it? Even in your world, that could mean something different, couldn't it? You ever feel like giving Pastor Isaac a knuckle sandwich? Oh, we better not ask. Uh, Pastor Eric, I mean. Uh, Pastor Eric. Yeah, I better get the right pastor here, right? Pastor Isaac's ready to run out the back door already. You ever felt like giving Pastor Eric a knuckle sandwich? Don't answer that. It might incriminate you just a little bit. Any wives here been tempted for just a moment to do that? There are several hands up and honest. They can take communion next time we take communion. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for you have the fruit of the Spirit? Say, so thank God for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's say again, miracle month. Miracle month. So I appreciate your prayers. And uh, my wife and I have been through a lot of hurdles. I know you know that. Thanks for praying for us. The kind cards you sent, the encouragement you've given to my wife, the support, as well as to myself. We are very thankful. You can only imagine on a journey like this that there are a lot of obstacles to overcome. One is getting your health back. One is fighting death itself. So we've experienced a lot of miracles. And my wife has a very promising future. Amen. So we have some financial challenges behind us, even though you have insurance. Come on, somebody. You have some challenges. So uh, sometimes it takes quite a while to overcome those challenges. So just hold your hand like this and say, oh, I have a few financial challenges from last year through all this. The most important thing, miracle, my wife is alive. She's getting stronger every day. She has a positive report from the doctors, even yesterday. And so praise the Lord. She was miraculously able to get a stem cell transplant, which is a miracle. And now hold your hand up there and just say all those financial situations with insurance companies and hospitals and all that. We had a real breakthrough on May 25th. So I would like your prayers over the next 14 days. May 25th is when our offer on this building was accepted. That's a miracle day. Say together, miracle day, 2003. So we would appreciate your prayers the next 10 to 14 days as they, the heads in the hospital and the insurance company think they'll come to finishing up all this, these issues in the next 14 days. Come on, let's thank the Lord for that phone call. And uh, we appreciate your prayers. Amen. Thanks for praying for us. Let's say together, miracles, miracles. I'm not complaining, mind you. I'm not being negative at all. I'm just listening to your prayers. The Apostle Paul was very wise throughout the epistles. He knew without the prayers of the saints, he could never get done what needed to be done. Listen, as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, without the prayers of the saints, we wouldn't even stay alive, let alone be able to accomplish the thing God wants us to accomplish. So my wife and I would like to have this behind us, amen? And we've seen God do many, many miracles for people in our church family to erase those bills and set those families free. And we're believing for the same thing. Amen? So thank you very much. I'm just simply asking you for your prayers. Now let's all say this together. Lord, 
Give me ears to hear. Pastor Bobby, do you want to use this lectern? Okay, would a couple of you men come help me take this down? Uh, Brother Jim, Pastor Gary, maybe. Now, let's say this together. Lord, give me ears to hear. And Lord, give me eyes to see. Listen. It'd go like this. Out of everything being said and done, you don't want to just get a piece. You can't understand the message with a piece. You need to get the whole thing. Let's say it together. Get the whole thing. If you don't mind, let's stand and welcome Pastor Bobby as he comes to minister the word tonight. Come on, let's thank the Lord for him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor Bobby. Come and be blessed of the Lord. Extend your hand to him. We thank you, Lord, for Pastor Bobby, his growth, the way he's matured, the way he's developed as a minister of the gospel, the way he's able to dig deep and share with us. We bless him tonight. We thank you that he's a pastor here at White Horse Christian Center. We thank you that he's our pastor. We thank you that he's our friend. And we ask you to bless him and Martha. And Lord, release your anointing. For those of us that are here and those watching online tonight, the presence of God would meet you wherever you are and touch you wherever you are, no matter what your situation is. And all the church said, amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. I say it again. God is still on the throne. He's never lost his position. (laughs) No matter what the news tell you, he's still in charge. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We come now in the name that's above every name, that at that name every knee shall bow. And we thank you now, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us into all truth, truth that shall make us free, liberate us from every line. We thank you for the blood we appropriate in and over and through everything you give us stewardship over. And we thank you for your angels that are here on the heirs of salvation, who we are. We just give you glory for all things. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Pastor wanted me to preach when I preached, I think it was a Sunday morning, 830, uh, about our history. He wants me to take it from Luke 2, 8 through 9. And as I began to meditate and think about this scripture, uh, different thoughts come to my mind, but I want to read it first. It says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about, shone right about, shone round about them, and they were so afraid. When I first met, I meditated on this for a while, and the first thing came to my mind, because this is the month of May, I was thinking of history. What we see here in this scripture could not happen unless there was a history behind it. <laughs> history is very important to God, and even as we are celebrating White Horse Christian Center's history even today, and even this month of miracles happening, what we see here is says, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. I realized something from this time, before this time and going back, there had to be a seed that began our beginning. It had to be a thought in God's mind that he released to a man, a woman, to begin to come to this place, to be a part of this place. And he took me to Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, that says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Here God is letting you know, when he released something, it shall produce. Oh, praise the Lord. The fact that we're standing here and over these years, I don't know how long, I can't remember how long White Horse has been in, in existence. I've been here 17 years, I know myself, but for sure that seed keeps blossoming. It hasn't stopped. That means God has a continual plan. 
if we're here today, then tomorrow is still already in the seed that is yet bring forth and budded, that shall bring forth in its right time. So we have something to look forward to. So we've had a history we look behind that we stand on. And yet in that same seed, it has the strategy and design by God to take down the enemy of today and the enemy of tomorrow. It's already programmed when God released his word for the very destruction of whatever the enemy has for us. It doesn't mean that we're supposed to be overcomers in this life, in this time. So there are things that are coming, things that will come before us, but the seed of potential that's within this house is causing us to arise above our circumstances and our situations and become conquerors like Jesus Christ. We become more than a conqueror because he conquered and we get the benefit. We get the more. So look at this and realize God has had a seed in this house <laughs> that still has blossomed and still will blossom in the future. <laughs> You're in a house that has a future. Oh, praise the Lord anyhow. We're not over with yet. We got things to do. And our purpose and our future is not designed by somebody but God's word and what he said over us. In verse 11, he says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The same as we see in this example of the watering that went forth, that watered the earth and caused things to bring forth. He says, so is the word that went out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Hallelujah. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. And so God has sent his word to West Lafayette, Indiana to a place on Cumberland Place called White Horse Christian Center. And in that word, it had you in mind and me in mind. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> God was already thinking way ahead of us. He knew who this word would draw and what kind of people would come. But within that word had your deliverance, your setting free, your salvation, your healing, your strength, your encouragement, your empowerment. But that same word had that in it. But it has a history that is strong in God, strong in God's ability to see a people through no matter what. No matter what we face, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how down we seem, there's a getting up in that word, praise the Lord. Because within that word, he said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. So it don't matter what knocks you down, it matters what's going to get you back up. He's going to raise you back up no matter what's knocked you down. I don't know if you've been in fights, but you know... Most of the time I got in the fight, it was over before you got started, but praise the Lord. But I've seen people fight before, and the people just beat them and beat them and knock them down, and they get back up. They just beat them and beat them, and they get back up. And the person that's beating them don't get tired. <laughs> they say, I'm hitting you with everything, but you won't stay down. You go down, but you get back up. The Bible says the righteous fall seven times, but the Lord lifts them up. There is getting up in this seed, in this house, a potential of power and authority because there lives within us the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that cannot be stopped by nothing. And we live in such an hour and a time as this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> in changing seasons, uncertain moments, troubling days, his word neither fades nor fails. It endures forever. That means every promise will be fulfilled. I declare over the house that every promise God had said will come to pass because he is the author of that word and he is the overseer of that word and it shall accomplish everything that he has desired for your life, this house life, and your family life, even to your community, even to your state, even to your nation. <laughs> every promise and every principle will work. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Even when the earth seems to be shifting beneath your feet, if you remain anchored in God's word, you will stay stable. Oh, praise the Lord. 
Everything that must be shaken will be shaken, which it means anything not anchored in Christ will be shaken. But everything stabilized in him will not be moved by circumstances and situation. Praise the Lord. It says here in Isaiah 40, verse 8, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let me say it again. The word of our God shall stand forever. If you stand on his word, it matters not what rises up against you. Even when the numbers are more than, even the numbers are greater than, even when it seems like you have nothing to fight with, but when you have God on yourself, on your side, that is more than enough to face a whole army. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. God likes to do it like that so he can show off a little bit. Praise the Lord. Let it be seen. I am greater. It says here, President Woodrow Wilson says something about history that I always remember. He said, a nation or a people which does not remember what it was yesterday, does not know what it is today, nor what is it trying to do. We are trying to do a futile thing if we do not know where we have come from or what we have been about. History is about what I just told you. I'll read it again to you. A nation or a people, we are a people, we are a nation, which does not remember, remember, God tells us to remember what it was yesterday. <clears throat> this is what we're doing, celebrating this month because we're remembering what we were yesterday because what we are yesterday reflects our future and our hope for tomorrow. Does not know what it is today, know what it's trying to do. We have to remember yesterday to keep in mind God's word of what we're trying to do. We are trying to do a futile thing if we don't know where we have come from or what we have been about. One thing White Horse has been about is souls, lives changing, helping those that can't help themselves, strengthening the weak, encouraging the fivefold ministry, putting hope when those are beat down. Many of us came here totally fraught messed up, confused, didn't know which way was right and which way was wrong. We were totally just turned around and came in this house. And God met us in this house. We were been about saving souls, showing the fact there is a God greater than any circumstance you have lived through, any situation that you have lived through. He is greater. <laughs> oh, see, I'm, what I'm telling you right now is we have a history that is assured, unshakable, unmovable, because it's not based on man's wisdom. It's based on a man trusting God and his wisdom. So it cannot be shaken. The Bible tells us that, we, that a way a people views its own history affects the way the people behave. <laughs> it's amazing. History has a strange effect to affect you now on how you carry yourself. You realize there's a greatness to you. There's something that's bigger than you. It's something important. Two things I want to bring out as I go down here. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. It's one thing for sure. This angel came to pronounce and send a message. He sent the message correctly to the people he needed at first. And he sent it to the shepherds. This is a 400-year gap of not hearing anything from God. But there's a history even before the 400 years of gap. Because what seems like a gap to us is nothing to God. Because he's going to fulfill his word. What am I saying to you today? Whatever that word is that you have been standing on, hoping for, looking for to happen, no matter how long the gap has been, and it seems like denial has taken place, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. 
if there are people you are standing for saying God's going to change, he told you years ago, but there's a gap between the time he said it and now, does not mean God has missed a beat in the gap. He is going to fulfill it, and he'll fulfill it suddenly. Look to him. Why? You have a history that tells you God is faithful. I waited 25 years from the day the Lord told me my father would be saved to see him receive the Lord. 25 years. Sometimes I wondered. I said, well, every time I gave up, he'll send somebody by and preach a message. He said, I, ain't, I did not lie. I do not know how to lie. What I said to you, it is what is going to come to pass. I declare in this house every word that has been said in this house, no matter what America does, no matter what other people do, it shall be accomplished. It shall be fulfilled because God says it and he backs up everything that he says. Ooh, praise the Lord. <laughs> it says here, Romans 15, 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through, pray, through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. When you look back at history and you see other people going through, it's for you to have hope of the fact that he will do it for you. The great cloud of witnesses is the witnesses that said, oh, you cannot think of no hard place that they did not go through. But they're telling us, keep going. <coughs> Keep hope. He'll come through. Oh, my goodness. Look at Daniel and the lion's den. How much more danger can you have? And they're going to throw you in the lion's den who you know only do one thing, eat. And God shows up in the midst of the lion's den. The three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fire and a fourth showed up in the fire. I don't care what you're going through. There's a God that's greater than the fire, greater than the lion. <laughs> it's for you to have hope for tomorrow. When you lose your hope, you forgot tomorrow. <laughs> you forgot, excuse me, you forgot your yesterday. When you lose your hope today, that means you forgot what he did yesterday for you. Oh, praise the Lord. Remember, God says, Psalm 77, 11, remember the word of history. I will remember the works of the Lord, surely. <laughs> Ooh, I will remember the wonders of old. Isaiah 46, 8, 9 says, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. He said, remember. Remember your history. Remember all the times I came through. Remember. I can remember when I was in India and I drove this ugly green truck that had 18 holes in the tank. I had to go all the way to, <laughs> to, to the airport to go to work. And so I kept a can of gasoline in the back. I never ran out, thank God. And my gas meter didn't work. <laughs> Ooh, praise the Lord. I remember. I remember sleeping on the floor and mice coming up out of the sides of the floor because it's open. I remember hearing the, the, the traps click, bam, bam, all night long. But not near mouse bit me. Not near one touched me. I remember when I only had enough, enough food for one day. One day, I mean, one day, and God kept providing. I remember, see, when you got a history that says no matter what today is, I can remember the history of God being faithful to me over and over and over and over again. He has brought me through, not because I'm great, but because he's great. Remember, I am God, and there's none like me. Psalm 143, 5 through 6, I remember the days of old. I meditate 
on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hand unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. So I remember the fact, praise the Lord, hmm. praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. I remember leaving El Paso, coming here, leaving everything I knew, everything I grew up with, because God had given me a dream and said, I must go. He shut every door to kind of help me make sure I could go that direction, but praise the Lord, because I wasn't moving too fast. I was kind of dragging my feet. <laughs> I would say, is there not another plan for this whole thing? <laughs> and you know, when God don't speak, he only gives you one road. <laughs> I remember because when I left, I was bleeding to death. The dream that was given to me was this. I saw a great battle. The battle was in the church, murmuring, complaining. We were killing one another. A place that I saw nothing but God's glory the first two years. Every hard case in the city will be brought to my pastor. I seen people walk in weighing huge amounts of pounds and I'd be sitting there and watch this person lay hands and the person would go down to a size six, a size 10. I have seen this over and over. I seen legs grow out. It was an everyday thing in our church. I'm sending you a warning. Be careful of your tongue because the devil got us busy gossiping. And then all the miracles stop. We didn't even know it. Our church sits about 500. The oldest person maybe had been 30. We were all in our 20s. I'm not trying to put it down, but this is a known fact. My pastor was the number one prostitute in the city. So you can imagine what kind of opposition she would run up against. But she knew we had her back. But then the devil calls us to implode and begin to kill one another. So when I got ready to leave, I was bleeding badly. The dream said this, me and my best friend was riding horses and bullets and things were going by us. And then all of a sudden, a cannon hits him in his chest, throws him straight off, kills him instantly. He became a Jehovah Witness. He walked away from the church totally. He was the only man that I knew. I have not heard another do this. He could interpret your tongues down to the dialect, where it came from, what century it came from, and directly interpret it. I have never run into another man like this. I ran into a lot of things in my early years. He was dead. I kept going. The bullets kept flying. Finally, the cannon that hit him hit me. It threw me off my horse. I lay there bleeding. It was a mother who gave me the dream. I was leaving in three hours. She said, you lay there bleeding, but I don't know if you live or you die. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Oh, I remember saying, I am not going to die. I don't know how I'm going to live yet, but I ain't going down. I am not a quitter. I never have been. I said, I don't understand all this Christianity stuff, but praise the Lord. I met God many a time yelling at the circle downtown for many hours in Indianapolis because I was in pain. But I can honestly tell you, I remember he met me at my deepest moments. See, history is important. He would make them rehearse their history when they gave their offering. Because you got to remember. Oh, praise the Lord. First Samuel 17, 29. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but praise the Lord. And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? I always remember that because it's so important. What does that word cause mean? 
before facing Goliath, David, who later became the king of Israel, asked, is there not a cause? First Samuel 17, 29, the word cause in that verse could be translated history. Is there not a history of God's faithfulness in your life? I can say in this house, there is a history of God's faithfulness over and over, even if you watch pastors and all the different pastors and the different people and their testimony, there's a history of impossible odds and God changing them into your favor. David made me ask, don't we have a history with God through which he has demonstrated his faithfulness to us? Yes. Do we have a historical covenant right to his help? Yes. Did he say he would fight our battles? Yes. Let's connect with our history and deal with the giants. For there is a yes to our covenant promises. In the Bible, I call this the shadow fact. Hebrews 10, 1, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. The thought is mainly at the first, the law is a shadow. A shadow, 4639, the Greek says, an image cast by an object in representing the form of that object. In other words, the Old Testament is a shadow of one person of the New Testament Christ. If you study the Old Testament, you have to come up with Christ. He is who the shadow is of the Old Testament. It says something, so understanding that, because we're dealing with the subject of the glory of the angel coming down. It's very powerful. It says in Psalms 8, 5, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. He's talking about humanity. He crowned us at the beginning in the garden. We are glory people. We were made for glory. Hope I get to say that off before I get done. Uh, the first family, the light that covering or glory upon them was a connection with their correct relationship with their God. It dressed them. It covered them. Genesis 2.25 says they were both naked, but not were not ashamed. See, <laughs> it's something to the glory. It covers our nakedness. It does a whole lot of things. I hope I get to say it, praise the Lord. <laughs> but it does a whole lot of things for us. It goes on. Hmm. Praise the Lord. When I got ready to come, the scripture God gave me when I was at home, getting ready to get to the plain, was Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. This is what he gave me when I got ready to leave. All I knew was this. Then he gave me another scripture on the plain. I'll just say to you, they didn't comfort me, but they were later comforting. <laughs> Mark 10, <laughs> 28 through 30. He said, there is no man that has left house or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands with persecutions and the world to come eternal life. He said, this is your promise in obeying me. <laughs> the greatest danger to the glory is, is the fact. Let me go here first. Let me go to Genesis 3, 7. It says, in the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked. Sin is an enemy to the glory. When we sin, the glory lifts that protection. Praise the Lord. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See, when the lack of glory it comes because of committing sin, when man willfully sinned, the result was that the glory left him 
which opened the door for death to come into the earth. We are glory people. Stay with me if you can. I'm trying to get there as quick as I can. I realize that even in the feasts, the major three feasts, you have Passover, you have Pentecost, we just went through, and then you have Tabernacle. Tabernacle is the celebration, the rehearsal of God himself coming amongst his people in his glory, being with him. And this even showed in the millennial period, <laughs> this feast was also celebrated. He said, these will be a memorial forever. Why? Because something was happening, people. Moses asked the question, this question, Exodus 40, 35. <laughs> he said, Moses was able to enter the tent of meeting. Excuse me. This goes into something. I'm just going to show you some people. Let me tell you my other testimony before I get going. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Moving ahead of myself a little bit. When I came here, just before I came here, the church I was at, I didn't understand everything that was happening. I was just experiencing, and I was learning, and I was growing. And what began to happen one day in my office, this happened two times in my office, one time out in the public. But the first time it happened, me and my bishop were sitting in my office, and we were just talking, and he had talked to his spiritual dad, and he came off the phone saying, be still and know that I am God. All of a sudden, the atmosphere in the room changed. It's like the lights begin to refuse to shine. I was saying, what is going on? All of a sudden, I had a 50-gallon fish tank. I could have anywhere from 30 to 50 fish in there at a time. They never stopped moving. They said it was always good for therapy when people come to see you. So I figured when they come to see me, they need some therapy. Praise the Lord. So I had fishes. But all the fish lined up right beside me in a single row and stopped swimming. I said, what's going on? I began to feel this increase back then. I didn't know what it was, but it was his glory increasing. And as it began to increase, as he got about four and a half to five, as late, because my next time he explained it to me, but about four and a half to five, I noticed that there was a tightening. There was a absolute authority in the room. Authority didn't, did not ask my permission but authority that took over. As he began to take over, I looked at a dot above my head and didn't move. I understood somewhere in my spirit, don't move unless I give you permission. Later on, I found my bishop looked at the wall and did the same thing. God gave him permission to go up first, out first. I followed behind him, went out there and said, he asked me, was I okay? I asked him, was okay? He said, okay. Then he got in his car and went home. So I had to experience the rest of this myself. I didn't know what was going on. I want you to understand. When they said they felt the fear, the glory showing the fear, I was afraid because I didn't understand what God was doing. I have never experienced something that caught, captured me and arrested me. You know, us Americans don't like that. <laughs> we want all our freedom. It wasn't about getting nothing. You better obey. That was like what you felt like. So I went back to the back and I went to the wall. And I began to rock and back and forth and began to weep. My wife came out of the office. She was working there. She said, what's the matter? I said, he's come to kill me. I said, he's come to kill me. He said, who come to kill me? Because that's how I felt inside when all that power and that authority came on me at that level. It shook me all the way down. All of a sudden, she said, well, let me go see. So she walked around. So she walked in my office, but I didn't, I didn't present my hand to help her. <laughs> I said, yo, yo, I stood there and looked at her, you got to come out. I said, but she stood there. And my wife don't use to perspire, but she began to just perspire confusedly. It started to run out. I said, you got to get out of it. So she stepped out. Then she leaned upon my wall, and all the strength in her legs went out. Shoot. I grabbed her and pulled her toward me. I said, Shh, I don't know who this is inside here. Praise the Lord. So I didn't go back in my office. I don't know how I figured how to close the door, but I did without going back in there. <laughs> a week later, me and the bishop's there again. We have a meeting with our wives and some more people. They left. And then all of a sudden, it didn't go like one, two, three, four. It was at four and a half right away. We went, oh, my God. We both ran to the door. 
We smacked each other, but, you know, I'm the servant, so I had to step back. Let him go first. I was saying, please hurry up because it's taking no time. <laughs> so he went out. I went out. The same thing happened. You okay? Yes, I'm okay. You're okay. He left. I went outside the foyer. And God moves into the foyer. He says, where can you run and where can you hide? I said, nowhere, Lord. I said, nowhere. He said, you know why you ran? He said, you're still too carnal and too fleshly to what I really want to put upon you of myself. And I said, Lord, it shook me. I was scared. He said, this level I'm showing him, when he started to show me the levels, he took it all the way to seven. He was standing right here. That's why the fish lined up right here. Everything changed. My flesh was having trouble. He said, you couldn't deal with me in my glory. You're still carnal. You're too, too fleshly. But this is the glory I want to put on my people at the end times. <laughs> I said, my God. I said, Lord, then next time, make sure you cause my knees to bow. He said, oh, yes, I'm coming again to you. And I'm going to prepare you. See, I say that because we went through this season. You don't know how much God is preparing you through this isolation for what he really wants to release upon you of himself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We have murmured. We have complained. We have gossiped. We have slandered. <laughs> but God said, I'm preparing a people for my glory. I said, my God. He said, next time you shall not run. The third time I saw him, I saw him in Revelation chapter 1. I saw him in his purity and all the strength in my legs went out. Whew. I fell over a rail in a busy highway. I laid there for almost 30 to 40 minutes. I couldn't get up. I had a suit on and all I did was fell down on the dirt. See, it's just like all the different ones, like John the Apostle. When he saw him, he fell down, he's dead. Isaiah, when he saw him, his glory fell down, he's dead. Jeremiah, Ezekiel fell down, he's dead. Daniel fell down, he's dead. See, when you move into glory, flesh has no strength of his own to stand or do anything. All he can do is bow. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. This is what began to happen. And he said, I am preparing you. I'm preparing you. I'm preparing you, people. <sighs> He's been preparing us. We couldn't do what we normally used to do that distract us from him. He cut it off. I don't give the sovereignty of this over to the devil. Even though he was working in it, God's taking everything, his plan, and make it for my good. God is in charge. But there's a glory coming. Man, let me just jump right here so I can end know this. Ooh. <laughs> See, this glory, when it comes, I wish I could get it to show me thy glory. That's what Moses said. You know what Moses saw? It wasn't a cloud. He saw the back part. See, when the glory comes, he, he, he pushes himself through that wall that separates the natural and the spiritual. He comes out in the natural in his purest form. And your flesh, if it ain't ready, cries out. Isaiah chapter 6 says, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. What happened? Isaiah met God with his glory and instantly it revealed the sin in his heart. He said, I murmur, I complain, I talk, I have unclean lips. <laughs> One thing else I learned about the glory, it always brings a, a fear and a reverential fear of the Lord. When it comes, there's a fear of the Lord that comes. The fear of the Lord is not what, the, what I manifested because that's what the Israelites manifested. 
when Moses and God came down shooting up the Ten Commandments, said, oh, no, God, no, no, Moses, you go. We, we will stay back here. They couldn't handle the purity of him coming down. But that time he had a cloud around him. The cloud was there so he wouldn't break out and destroy us because he hates sin. <laughs> oh, what am I saying? God has this house on a steady course. And I have been waiting for God to manifest his glory in other levels. I tell you this much, sin cannot stand in it. It cannot. I was just, he wasn't telling me what the sin was. He just said I was carnal and fleshly too much. At <laughs> one time I thought I was doing pretty good, praise the Lord. Two things that glory would do. First, it refines and purifies those that fear him. Second, it would judge the hearts of those who say they serve him, but in reality, they do not fear him. See, the fear of the Lord Moses had, he moved toward the cloud. The people moved away. This is a different move. But when the glory shows, everything changes. It says, Haggai 2.9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. There's a glory we have not experienced at White Horse Christian Center that is coming to us by God as he prepares us in our bodies to handle the glory that he wants to put on us. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Romans 9, 23 to 24, I want you to mark this one for sure. And that he might make known the riches of his glories on the vessels of mercy, who we are, which he had afore prepared unto glory. He had prepared us for this glory. Woo. Philippians 4.19 says, but my God shall supply, listen to this, in the glory, there's a supply. I'll read it. All your needs according to his riches in glory. By Christ. He supplies your need in glory. You got to see where this glory is so important to him. We are ordained to come into the glory. Wealth is transferred through the glory. The glory also brings us to oneness. It makes us one. I'll read it to you. John 17, 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. The glory, when it manifests, it makes us one. It's not us following all these different rules to be something like everybody else. The glory, when it manifests, it takes the most far-reaching, weirdest, strangest people that could ever be and make them one. Oh, praise the Lord. Ooh. In the glory realm, we are more conscious of his holiness. This is why the angels cry, holy, holy. And Isaiah 6, 3, it goes on. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Just give me five more minutes here. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed. The glory causes you to change into what he is. Into the same image. How? From glory to glory, there's a new level of glory coming. Woo. Let me see, can I find this? 2 Corinthians 4, 6-7. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. To do what? To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Where? In the face of Jesus Christ. That glory is in his face. Pastor said, now we're in the grace of glory. We are Old Testament is in obedience to glory. We're in a grace for glory because Jesus Christ is the one. That's why the angel said what he said. The glory came down because this vessel was to bring many sons to glory. It was part of his destiny. Oh, help us, Lord God. Colossians 1:27. to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hear me clearly. 
Romans 9, 23 to 24, and that he might make known the riches of his glory in the vessels of honor. Excuse me, I read that before. Hebrews 2, 10, this is what I want. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory, people. <laughs> We're to be brought into a level of glory to walk in things we never have walked in before. Do you understand this glory brings protection? When the glory moved, when they were moving, coming out of Egypt, God went before them, above them, behind them. But every nation was shaking because of this glory was upon them. <laughs> it was making them afraid. They were trying to figure out, we got to get rid of these people. They were scared. But these people had no weapons. They only had God, the most strongest weapon there is. So what I'm saying to you tonight, God is one to bring us to another level of glory. But I want to say something to you. He must examine your heart to see what's in there. Last year, I spent waking up 5 a.m. in the morning to do one thing. For one hour, I repented every day. I asked the Holy Spirit to search my heart he will show me things in me. Pride, arrogance, self-righteousness, stubbornness. He began to show me over and over. Sometimes all I could do, I didn't speak in tongues. All I could do was cry. I just lean over the bed and say, my God, my God. Are you willing to be searched like that? See, I want that kind of glory. I want that glory on me because God's going to break through my flesh and become the house, this house. I want that. No one can kill you until he's ready. Oh, you don't hear me. <laughs> you become invincible. When that glory's on you, they're not touching you when they touch you. Because he's on you. They're touching him by touching Oh, the glory is important. But one thing for sure, you can't walk mediocre. One thing I also know, it's the quickest way to get yourself taken out of here. He gets a four or five on you. He is not playing. He's in charge. But see, he knows the fact he has to help us get there. <laughs> he knows how we are. But his heart is to bring a seven-level glory of purity upon us. <laughs> so I just want to say tonight, don't take this time lightly. Let him examine your heart. And what he tells you to do, you need to do. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for all that you've done. Bring the revelation of your people to an understanding of your purpose. Jesus came. The angel had to come with glory because Jesus will come with glory. For a people that will be glory people. Lord, I declare we are those people. We want to be like you want us to be. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. We're going to worship and just begin worshiping to the Lord. And I encourage you tonight as the Lord draws you, come to the altar. Let him examine your heart. Place yourself in a place where you can be examined. Uh, yeah, just like Pastor Bobby did. And let him show you. Just and he will show you his glory. He will, he will, he will touch you. He he will cleanse you. He yes. will he will put you right where you need to be. 
Yeah, uh, and Naomi gave a word two, uh, two times separately, but about the cracks and how the pressure is revealing things that we didn't even know were wrong, that looked different imperfections and yes. things. Pastor said numerous times that in times of pressure, what's weak and what needs to be got out, God, God gets it out, and, and, and that's what he's doing right now. Yes. Powerful word, Pastor Bobby, powerful. Yes. Very, very, very good. So we're going to worship. Just go ahead and lead us in some worship. And I encourage you to come. Just come. As the Holy Spirit draws you, come. One thing I will tell you from experience, don't harden your heart. Don't, don't wait. When he pulls on you, yield. Yield. Yeah. You will yield. Yes. Just like Pastor Bobby said, every knee will bow. Yes, every knee. So I encourage you to come. As he draws, come. So the altar's open. Uh, we love you. Thank you so much for being here. If you're watching us online, we're going to dismiss you and give you the opportunity to go and pray with the folks that, that you're watching with and uh, tithe and give to your local church as well as our congregation has the opportunity as they leave to do the same thing. We love you. God bless you. And uh, if you're watching online, there is no time or distance in prayer. If you need the Lord, yes. if you need to repent, yes. he is waiting on you. He is knocking. The Bible says... That behold, he, Jesus himself said, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and he's knocking tonight. Yes. He's knocking tonight. So I encourage you, give your life fully to him. Yes. If you don't know him, get to know him. He wants to know you. He will introduce himself to you. If you're in the congregation here, you're backslidden, you're away from the Lord. Yes. He's drawing you. He's wooing you. Don't harden your heart. Friend, please, don't do what I did for years. Yes. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just yield yourself to him. Let God have his way in you. He is the only way. He is the way maker. So we invite you to worship. We invite you to come. Come to the altar. Praise the Lord. Thanks for joining us today. And we say blessings to you as we depart. We depart in peace and ask God to bless you in every way. And for those of you that would like to give, the Lord bless you. There are four ways to give. Number one, online at whcc.net. Number two, you can call the church office, 765-477-1111. Number three, you can mail a check, 1780 Cumberland Avenue, West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. And you can give in person here in the service or anytime the office is open. Be sure to remember to tithe to your local church and be a blessing to your church and your elders, those that God has raised up in your house to lead you. This has been a special day and a special time. Remember to send your testimony if you will, to my testimony at whcc.net. We would love to hear from you and what God is doing in your life. And let the Spirit of God seal what God has given you today in a very special way. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in upcoming events. God bless.